Alright, so I'm building a new alternator motor driver. Uh, this is to drive the BLDC alternator motor. Uh, what I'm doing here, I've actually gone and made a PCB uh, using the laser printer, transfer paper, uh, ferric chloride etchant solution method. And it came out really nice. Uh, I even have a little logo over here. It's a Needle 3000. And uh, so I'm, I've put that on there. This one, uh, compared to the last one, uh, the last one had three 555 timers on it just to take the sensor and put, put it out to where these uh, guys will drive. Uh, this all runs off of 12 volts, so these guys get plenty of voltage. Uh, but I went and put a fourth one in here. This one's going to be a pulse width modulated driver. And uh, there's one trace here that runs along the front side of these guys. This one is outputting to each one of these guys' is reset pin. So if one of these happens to be on, it's only going to be on while this one is telling it to. So basically I can tell this one to you know, do its little pulse width modulation thing. And it will, should uh, limit what these guys are doing. Uh, that output comes out here through these resistors. There's one resistor per MOSFET. Uh, count up to four. That's the first 555 timer. Uh, those first four control this parallel set of MOSFETs. And that's how we get our switching done. The power part, uh, you would have a power going into the alternator, a positive. Uh, you know, anywhere between 5 volts to 50 volts is what I'm figuring, and I can have this will work out too. Uh, at 10 volts, you're looking at needing 250 watts going through here, so uh, it ha this will handle that pretty well just for like experimenting. Anyways, with the 12 volts coming into the alternator, uh, the alternator splits it up. That's that wire is a common between three coil sets, those three coil sets, each one will come out to these guys here uh, and then these guys will switch out and each one is connected to the ground this whole plane here is the ground uh, from there uh, it just switches based off of the uh, sensor input so if the thing's spinning it's the, each sensor is going to see something different and so it's going to tell each 555 timer to turn on they're not on ever at the same time it's always one or the other and uh, so Basically, what ends up happening is those sensors will tell it where, you know, if the magnet's coming near a spot where the coil needs to turn on, it'll just tell that 555 timer and tell that switch to turn on that coil, and that coil will turn on until it's out of the range of the sensor, which then it turns off and the switch closes, which it probably goes to the next one. These open because it saw a sensor, and then once it closes, these, this guy comes on and it just sequences like this. But like I said, the pulse with modulator set, that'll give me uh, a speed control, basically. And I'm hoping that it'll work out, you know, just putting a trace all the way from the output on this one to the resets on these guys. And it's worked in the simulation, so I'm hoping that it should work just fine. So, but we'll see. At this point, I still need to run the wires, you know, the signal wires from the 555 timers to the, uh, or from the resistors to the MOSFETs. And I also need to put ground from each one. The ground is this guy on the outside. Signal is the one on the outside, or on the the on yeah, this side here. And then the middle pin is actually just going to go away. That's what I ended up doing on these guys here. Take out the middle pin, and you get your contact right in here on these uh, pads right here. That's why I'm using this aluminum block here. I figure the aluminum will keep the heat down. Uh, looking at it earlier, I was noticing. There's actually some warpage right around there, but it's not too bad. I mean, you can kind of see it in the light there, but there's, it's not too bad. But, like I said, all I need to do now is just uh, button it up, and then I'll have another video showing speed-controlled alternator motor. Till then.